Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Udemy. So guys, from today onwards, we are going to start a new very course in which we'll be discussing about uh, this whole geomorphology as a whole chapter, right? Uh, so the first uh, chapter what we're going to discuss is about introduction to geomorphology, all right? So let's start. Before starting, let's uh, focus upon the syllabus which we are actually going to delve upon, right? So these, this is the main syllabus. These are the main chapters which will be covered in this whole course, right? In which it will be consisting of continental depths, isostasy, vol volcanicity, earthquake, tsunamis, uh, uh, denudation chronology, erosional surfaces, slope development, applied geomorphology, etc., etc. So, so this is a bunch of basically, uh, you know syllabus which has been mentioned in your upsc syllabus right so we are going to you know uh, cover each one of topic but this class is not uh, topic wise this is just an introduction to this whole geomorphology chapter through this chapter i'm just going to focus upon that what are the main things that we are actually going to delve upon in this whole syllabus all right so uh, in this class we'll be mainly focusing on what this geomorphology actually is what are the landforms see because these are the bases on which this whole chapter will actually focus upon right then the classification of a landform of course so let's focus on the first fact that what geomorphology is so geomorphology is nothing but a scientific study of various landforms that are being existing throughout this whole world uh, by landform what do i mean by landform i mean uh, which we actually observe like plains like plateaus like uh, you know uh, mountains these are the basic landform which actually we see right so for those how do uh, how does these landform originated throughout this world so we just do a scientific study in this geomorphology and the scientific study is based on the fact that whether we are focusing upon the cause and effect relationship or not like uh, how like one if there is a mountain then how that mountain has formed what are the reasons of the formation of that mountain so that is the cause and what are the effect of that mountain say for example if uh, you know this is the direction of wind and now uh, mountain is over here right so what will happen will wind will lift up and there might occur orographic rainfall right so these are various factors which will be actually focusing upon while we'll be delving in this uh, whole geomorphology as a chapter now whenever we are reading this geomorphology then we should mind one thing very clearly that geomorphology is very much getting closer to geology and it is moving away from geography now first thing that has struck in your mind that is that what this geology is what this geography is right so let me clarify each see first of all we'll focus upon geology so what do you mean by geology see in geology we mainly focus upon the science of the earth basically geology is an earth science which is directly concerned with the formation of earth how earth has formed uh, like how whether it is a solid formation or you know in other form basically it's solid only right but how means what is the intensity of that solidness right right how the rocks have been formed there are different uh you know methods of formation of rocks as well that will focus upon other chapters uh, for one kind of rock is igneous rock igneous rock directs come up out of magma and lava right so it gets converted into metamorphic rock right it gets converted into sedimentary rocks which further gets converted into metamorphic rock so these are the various types which will be actually focusing on on geology so geology is a science geology is an earth science which look on to these matter and overall it uh, you know also inquires that how these rocks which leads to the formation of earth has changed over time means we get to observe the narrative you know the the time frame evolution of some sort of landform in this geology right so basically it describes the structure of earth beneath means in beneath the earth what are there that i mean which has resulted in shaping of earth right from the earth's history right so these are the things which will be focusing upon geology right now what is geography geography is a field of science uh, in which we read of course about the you know various phenomena which we delve into geology but on a lighter note but in this geography we mainly focus upon a much holistic you know components like 
different landforms different you know features which we actually observe in landform it also focuses upon the human aspect right and what are the phenomena taking place on the earth and the overall planet how the winds are taking place so everything everything right comes under the domain of geography so geography is domain is much more larger i would say and it is much more comprehensive than the geological part right and in this whole geography we encompass a multivariate discipline in which we seek to understand the earth and uh, how the human are interacting with earth and what are the complexities that we are actually observing on overall earth so it is like uh, the geomorphology is a state uh, study of both geology as well as geography right in which in geology we mainly focus upon the uh, how the construct of earth by which what kind of rock the earth is formed of and is in geography we mainly focus upon a bigger role right a bigger uh, uh, holistic view all right so this is the definition of geomorphology which have, we have focused upon now before starting the class i have so i have told now that we in ge geomorphology we focus upon the scientific study of landform now do you know the exact meaning of landform what landform is i have only told you that you, you know plains plateaus and mountains are the landform see those are the kind of landform but if directly question comes up that what is landform so what will you write so let's start so see firstly we have focused upon what is geomorphology now let's focus upon landform right so landform is nothing but a natural feature which we actually observe on the earth surface and these natural features are either it will be plain either it will be you know uh, plateau or it might be a mountain right mountain like himalayas plateau like chhota nagpur plateau plains like gangetic valley plain right indo ganga plain all right so these are the very various natural features which we actually observe on the surface of the earth not only this we observe many features like canyons are also there valleys are also there between two mountains there is a valley right it is also a landform kind only right peninsula see we have we know the uh, india's map right india's map is something like this and this part is whole peninsula right so this is also kind of landform na so there is many plethora of landforms which we actually observe so landform definition by definition it is a natural features on the earth crust uh, we actually observe not only on the earth rather in on any sort of planetary body if we you by a telescope you you know focus upon the moon then also you will observe many landforms over there in moon as well right so how these are produced see these are produced by the complex interaction of various geological processes and those geological processes are those geomorphic processes are either it may been endogenic uh, endogenic forces are applied or an exogenic forces are applied in endogenic forces we get to you know in um, upcoming chapters of course we'll be getting to know the what is uh, i mean different type of endogenic forces that we actually observe right like plate tectonics is a result of endogenic forces only right then exogenic forces like uh, rainfall erosion right wind erosion hai na so various sort of erosionary activities are also coming under the exogenic force not only this uh, it is also like these landforms are uh, also formed by the complex interaction of nature of rocks like like what kind of you know rock is there and in that kind of rock which sort of landform is formed right so you know in different hardness of rocks different sort of uh, you know landforms we actually observe not only this involvement of biotic community also plays a very major role in the formation of landform of any particular region so this whatever the definition we have seen now this is the beginner definition of course everyone will know but if you need to you know write a some sort of more technical more complex uh, you know answers then you can use these keywords like landform is an individual topographic features of whatever size and thus the term could refer to as something as minor as cliff or a sand dune so these are also landforms only cliffs sand dunes you can include here canyons you can include here valleys peninsula so everything you can include here right and it is again produced by the complex interaction between endogenic forces exogenic forces nature of rock and of course by uh, involvement of biotic community also plays a very important role in the formation of a landform right now what are the recent trend which we actually observe recent trend is that geomorphology is slipping out of the hand of geography as we have already discussed this point 
Second is there is a development of regional geography means whenever we used to read geography we used to you know analyze it on a regional aspect. See the main thing this whole concept we will mainly focus upon in human geography right in which we will see upon aerial differentiation and regional synthesis right. So that you know focus much upon the geographical part as well because that is a part of human environment relationship right so now as of now i'm skipping it but uh, it uh, i mean in various aspect we also apply geomorphological knowledge right so this is the i mean this point can be explained through the very last chapter of this geomorphology in which we will be read about applied geomorphology right so stay tuned till that very class as well don't worry about it. so anyways for this class we have you know delved into these topics like what is geomorphology what is landforms and what are the classifications of landform is what we are going to see now so what are the classification of landform basically salisbury who was a geographer he has classified landform on various magnitudes basically he has classified landform into first order landform second order and third order landform now let's focus upon what is first order landform see first order landform is simply the largest features which we actually observe in world map say for example this is also world map right so what are the largest feature you observe either it is a continents are there yeah these five continents are seven continents are there right and these water bodies there right clearly all right so in overall what we see two types of landform so these are what coming under the first order landform these are the largest features uh, the example is either continent and oceans right and these are purely these are purely the product of endogenetic forces because by the application of endogenetic forces you know this have resulted in the formation of these very continents and ocean although although if you see here see if you see the satellite image what you will observe that this is a land part right this is a land part and this is a water part you will probably observe that this is the boundary between these two but in reality in first order landform the boundary between uh, the main continent and the ocean is not that what we have seen rather the boundary is submerged right and it is at the margin right see basically although the shoreline at the sea level appears at conspicuous demarcations between the land and water which we have actually let you know this this part but this is not the boundary right it is not the accepted boundary between continent and sea see that this is these are the facts which you should actually remember right and each continent has a own margin which is actually submerged and this margin belongs to continental shelf see this is the continental shelf and this is the continental slope so end of continental shelf determines the boundary between the first order landform that is continent and ocean is it clear so write it in your note copy as well now at the outer edge at the outer edge the slope which is more steeply we can actually observe see up till here the slope is very gradient right but here you can see the continental slope the slope is very steep right so this will again focus upon when we'll you know read upon what these uh, continental shelves are what these continental slopes are so there you'll get a very wide picture of it but overall first order landform is done now let's focus upon what is the second order landform see second order landform basically the thing which actually comes up is uh, within the first order landform see within the first order landform we have read about continent and ocean right these are the where the two things now second order landform occurs within the continent so what are the macroscopic features which we actually observe within the continent those are either plains those are either plateaus or either mountains right so these are the basically second or these are coming under the second order landform which are superimposed over the first order landform see plains are also superimposed over the continents only you won't find plains in you know uh, oceans right Similarly, you won't find plains in uh, plateaus in oceans, not mountains. Of course, mountains are there. Those are sea mounts, but that is a different other case, right? So anyways, these are what coming under the second order landform. And in ocean also, you will get second order landform. What are those? See, I've said now, there are sea mounts as well. So sea mounts come under this oceanic uh, second order landform, all right? Not only sea mounts, mid-oceanic ridges, right? 
the ridge is what you will actually observe uh, in atlantic ocean mid of atlantic ocean in s shape that is a mid ocean that is a very good example of mid oceanic ridge right not only ridges trenches in which mariana trench is a very good example right so these are the basically forms landforms which are either present in continent or present in ocean right and these are superimposed over the first order landform right and these are also the product of either endogenetic or exogenetic forces or either both see earlier first order landform was purely the you know a product of endogenetic landform right second order landform is purely i mean it is not purely but it is impurely the product of uh, endogenetic landform exogenetic landform as well as both endogenetic and exogenetic the examples are of course we have already discussed right say for example both when when both endogenetic and exogenetic forces apply when there is a formation of sea mounts right see what happens is say for example it is a sea floor it is a water level right here is a sea mount right so what happens is it also gets eroded by the currents of water right so see the uh, basically the internal forces leads to the formation of sea mount right again if these are also eroded by the external agents right by the fluvial you know erosion so both the you know applications are applied in the formation of sea mount or normal mountain in you know uh, continents right so the first order landform is done the second order landform is done now comes the third order landform so what we will read in third order landform see basically third order landform are relatively smaller features right as compared to the first order and second order first order what we have read continent second order mountain but the third order are relatively uh, i mean uh, superimposed over the second order landform either they are superimposed over the plains if you are uh, talking about the continent right either they are superimposed upon plains or mountain or plateau right so what are the examples like canyons right canyons if you see then it is you know between if it's found between the mountains only right so it is superimposed over the mountain right so canyon is a very good example of third order landform all right so they are purely exogenic in nature because exogenetic forces leads to the formation of uh, these uh, you know third order landform and they are rarely found over the oceans as well the examples are gorges right then uh, u or v shaped valleys that we have, we actually observe between the mountains flood plain is a very good example of uh, third order landform coastal areas are also a very good example of third order landform because they are superimposed over the second order landform right all right so overall what we have learned that landforms are of uh, landform of first order hai na which is either continent or ocean right within i mean uh, the second order landform are superimposed over the first order landform like mountain plains plateau in ocean if we call the second uh, order landform then comes continental shelves continental slope ocean deep ocean basins right so these are everything are second order landform because they are superimposed over the oceans only now what comes under the third order landform so these are like peaks flood plains oxbow lakes right delta alluvial fan so everything come are superimposed over the second order landform that's why they are being classified under the third order landform by salisbury and then uh, if you talk about the oceanic part then of course islands that we actually observes over the oceans coral reefs right shorelines atolls so these are the landforms which are the you know Uh, superimposed over the second order landform that's why they are called the third order landform now see one idea i am giving you one very good uh, you know uh, crack i am giving you that whenever you know you you are you had been asked about the atolls hai na many times you will get this questions regarding the coral reefs atolls right so that time starting you can put that like it is a third order landform right so just remember these things every point are the keywords and these keywords are will what fetch you main marks in your paper right so remember these all keywords this will be very much helpful in your answer writing practice all right so this is all about the discussion of the very first classes that we have done for today and for any more de uh, descriptions guys i mean everything links are given in the description which you can follow to join the whole classes right so this is all about the uh, today's class 
will meet you in next class bye bye take care and thank you thank you for listening to the whole video thank you very much guys